Welcome back to the Garth Roddy Show. We're here talking to Amy England, and she is a candidate, always a candidate, never never stop being a candidate. <laughs> You're never going to let me live that down. No, you said that. I think I'm a candidate for life and yeah. life experience, you know? <laughs> well, you made a good point, because if you're ever going to want to do anything in public office, or ever, I guess anywhere, especially now with social media, we're always a candidate for something. Mm -hmm. You know, we're a candidate to get panned or, or canned or starred. Yeah, and I think it's... Uh, and I think it's also owning who you really are. Yeah. The, everyone, like in terms of karaoke, all those other things, there's quirks about my personality, about who I am as a person. And those quirks are there regardless if I'm in public life or not. And it's just a matter of showing the truest person that I am to the people so that they don't feel duped when I get into office and, and, and represent them. Let's talk a little bit about that because one of the things is... A lot of people feel that they want to enter politics because they are passionate and said, you know, they've had enough. Uh, mm -hmm. Kind of one of the impetuses for you to step up to region. But I want to go beyond that. I want to go beyond that. There is a, a pattern of governance. There is a, a way to deal with in a government fold to be able to get things different. Most people have a naive idea that they can run for office having never sat on a committee having never had to work with uh, policies, procedures, having never had to do their own research mm -hmm. and relied on other people, um, that when they get there, the first year to 18 months, I've heard this is all about them getting the runaround, and then they finally figure it out, and they've only got about another year left, and then next thing you know, they're in election mode when media starts paying attention yeah. to them again. Well, and the other concern is the fact that you don't know who to trust when you fir first get into office because everyone has their own vested interests and everyone has their own things that they want to accomplish. We're talking about department heads, we're talking uh, about bureaucracy. We're talking about the, the, the other uh, council members that you're, you're with. Um, I think that staff do a, a fantastic job and their role is to be staff. And, and I think sometimes actually the staff in the city of Oshawa have had an unfair rap from the council members who uh, put blame on the staff members who are there to do a job and it, it's a job, but the politician is there to make the decision, and you're there to um, take responsibility for that decision. The staff might have given you the information, but you're the only person that has power to say yay or nay. So you can't, uh, I think that's another thing that happens, is going back and blaming uh, the bureaucrats, blaming the staff for things that have happened. If you don't believe that the research or something is accurate or correct, you need to have your own due diligence to find the truth. And if that truth is opposite and contrary to what the city staff has been telling you, then maybe those city staff members are not in the right job. But I don't think that it comes down to that a lot of the time. I think it comes down to nitpicking and choosing what issues you want to deal with, um, whether or not uh, it's, it's, it's truth or not truth. You pick out a certain fact of it, and then you just blow it up for the sake of getting your name in the paper or for the sake of grandstanding. Well, let's talk about, I, I'm going to throw something at you this morning before the interview. Um, I read uh, Toronto Sun, there's Louise Parks, uh, you know, uh, coming up as a mayor candidate saying that she's going to ask for a 5%, uh, you should, she's going to push for if she gets elected as mayor, which really is only one vote, by the way, mm -hmm. which is kind of ridiculous when you think anybody can do this. I'm not saying she's ridiculous, I'm just saying that everybody puts so much weight on the mayor, mayor leadership, but I, I don't really get that because yeah. it's one vote. But nonetheless, she was, her platform was she was going to ask for a 5% rollback and, uh, you know, and that, 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 that a, uh, an income freeze would happen. My thinking is, um, okay, that's an interesting sound bite. It's kind of nice for news and perhaps maybe appropriate, I don't know, but it's not anywhere near where the issues really lie in regards to mm -hmm. budget problems that are already happening, debt problems. Well, and I would argue that Louise is off base. I don't think it's a 5% uh, decrease in, or 5% um, or freeze on uh, the salaries. I think that, again, as I said earlier, we need to be looking at removing the local council positions and, and, and uh, narrowing down how many people are on our municipal council so that we're saving people money. We have a more cohesive unit that's actually able to work together. Um, when I find at the table, I mean, I dealt with, uh, I was chair of the, um, board of directors for the student association we had 25 members that were on that board it is very difficult how do you to wrangle get through. a board like that it it is the most difficult situation to uh sort of maneuver your way through uh because everyone has their own individual interest and everyone has their own viewpoint and everyone has an opportunity to speak um or else it wouldn't be a democracy so um there a lot of meetings ran later than they should and uh, a lot of things uh, took longer to decide on because of the amount of people at the table and I think that when you look at government um, it's not about cutting salaries if Louise
these parks wanted to really do that. She should have done what Paul Brown did in Toronto. Paul Brown was running for Ward 12. He's a friend of mine that was the Student Association President at George Brown. He offered to cut his salary by 50%. If you're actually committed to the residents, let's not talk about 5% of your money. Let's talk about maybe you don't take your mayor's salary if you're really that vested interest in, in saving people money. Um, it's, it's to me, it, it's, it's a gimmick. You want to talk about saving money, let's talk about office expenses. Let's talk about uh, when council members use their blackberries when they're out of the country. Let's talk about uh, areas where council members have uh, meetings with people and put that on the backs of taxpayers and in terms of like expensive dinners and that sort of things. There are many other areas where we can actually cut money and, and save the taxpayers money. That doesn't mean that you're cutting the salary of the person that actually could be there to do the right job. The question is, is it a full-time or a part-time job? Mm -hmm. That's the question that's right now on the table in terms of uh, local council. Um, and um, I would argue that, and I've said this many times, that it's not even a job choice. This is a life choice for me. I'm committing for the next four years of my life to the citizens of Oshawa, and I'm committing for the rest of my life because I want to raise my family here. Um, I, me and my boyfriend, we want to get married at Parkwood, and you know, we have a whole plan on how we want to integrate ourselves. Do you have fully. a 200-year plan? No, not a 200-year plan, <laughs> um, but we, we have a plan. And I think that it's uh, when I was the student association president, I never considered it a job. It was, it was my calling for two years. I committed to the students. Um, some days, uh, some weeks, I worked 60 plus hours a week, plus going to school. Um, I sacrificed a lot to ensure that I was representing the needs of the students. And I think that's the role of a government official. It's you're dedicating your life. It's not a job. It's not nine to five. This is 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And when the citizens need you, you need to be able to step up and be there. So I think that the language is scary to me when you start talking about job, career, all that sort of stuff, yeah. because it really isn't. Well, I, I'm, I'm wondering when you're managing budgets like you are, and uh, having fiduciary responsibility as well to look after and or uh, look after um, you know people's interest mm -hmm. um, and I wonder if you know if it's a part-time job I mean I think being a trustee for a school is a part-time job yep. uh, although they manage one of the heaviest budgets in the in the country a, a lot uh, of money goes to uh, school education boards. yeah and so what happens is, is that um, we put these as part-time positions. So somebody has to go get their money somewhere else. Mm -hmm. um, this eliminates a lot of people from going into politics because if it went to be a part-time, you'd have to have, and you see it all these people, they're, they're, uh, they're um, elder states people. Yeah. They're accomplished in some other way, or, you know, they're, and they're able to run because they have a, a, a buildup. And yet some of our youngest, brightest minds can't get into their game because they don't have a war chest built up. Well, and that's the argument that's also on the table right now that a lot of people have been discussing about whether or not um, in the local level um, someone can also go to school as well as doing that job. And my question would be, and there's, a, there's been a shift on Facebook, which is great, but uh, some people have started to ask these questions. My question would be, who has a more... Um, who has a better stake in the citizens of Oshawa? A student who can talk to their professor, who professors are very lenient to, towards uh, situations, especially when you're in a leadership role and they are very accommodating to the situation if an emergency comes up, or someone that has their own business who works 70 plus hours a week, who has a vested interest to ensure that that's financially viable so that they can pay their mortgage, so that they can keep up the upkeep of uh, their lifestyle, and uh, they're running for office. Well, and I'll throw this out here before we go to break, is that they, if they are in their own business or work in a heavy industry, that when it comes to making a decision, how, how, how objective can they be when they can actually follow the dollars and realize that their vote could actually impact their income or that of their company. Yep. Uh, whereas a student, game on. But more than just a student. Because if we were to criticize students, then we would actually not have any doctors, lawyers, or dentists. Well, and I think the important thing is to be committed to lifelong learning. It's not about being a student, and that's what I'm committed to. Um, Gary Polonsky was a huge mentor to me uh, when he was the president at Durham College when I was a journalism student, and he instilled um, a value in me about lifelong learning and always being committed to learning and changing and growing, and university is part of that, and taking courses is part of that. Well, le learning and actually growing, uh, if, I, if there's politicians that aren't doing it, then uh, they're basically dead. Mm -hmm. They just have to be buried. All right, we'll be back with more Amy England right after this.